in today's show. We look back at all of Tuesday's action. Some good games and some um, games. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at basketballmonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at redrock underscore b-ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and we are available on all platforms. There were 12 games on Tuesday. Some absolutely egregious bullshit going on as well. We're going to talk about those games. We'll talk about some news as well. So, Warnie. Let's get it on, Gilly. (laughs) Not surprising anybody, but Lonzo Ball's season is allegedly over. Well, at the very least, his regular season is over. We know that for a fact. Um, Reports coming out that he just won't come back at all in the playoffs as that knee, after being surgically attended to, has just not responded well at all. One of those rare cases, we you know we always get, oh, surgery was a success. And maybe we got that from Ball and then it just it didn't work. It just hasn't worked at all. And that's twice he's tried to ramp back up and still seeing pain. So we won't, uh, we won't be seeing him for the rest of this season. Zion Williamson is doing more work. He's still not doing full court work. So we can safely rule him out again for the rest of the regular season. He's still out indefinitely. Maybe there's a chance for the play-in. Maybe if they make the first round of the playoffs, he could come back. I, I highly doubt that but we can rule him out of the regular season. While the Sacramento Kings, in whatever it is that they're trying to do, they're not officially ruling Sabonis and Fox out for the rest of the season. They said that, you know, um, we're not officially out, but we'd want them to be 100% and we're not going to do anything stupid. Well, I I would argue that that's contrary to the Kings' ethos in terms of doing things stupid Um, because that's just what they've done for ever, or at least the last 16 years. So we'll talk about stupid things in today's show a lot. And the Kings, um, yeah, apparently they're not officially out. Although, as I said a few weeks ago, I don't think there's any way those guys are playing. That has borne fruit so far. They've got two more games left. I wouldn't be holding out hope they're going to return to play uh, for those games on uh, Saturday, Sunday. So I yeah, wouldn't, be, uh, wouldn't be wasting my time waiting for that to come to fruition. But let's talk about the 12 games that we had on. Or well, yeah, the 12 games we had on. The first one, the Sixers. Made it a little bit hard work up against the Indiana Pacers. They do win in the end, 131-122. Maxi went absolutely bananas, especially early. He had 30 points with eight triples, seven assists to steal on a block. We know he'd struggled, but this is a huge bounce back from him. And Embiid played 39 minutes in a game against the Pacers. Feels like it's too many, but he had 45 and 13 with two threes. 30 attempts, 60% shooting. Unfortunately, just 70% from the line, but 64 fantasy points, he was great. And the Thick Hogsman had 17, 6, and 5 with 4 steals and 5 threes. Unfortunately, Jim Harden couldn't quite get it going, but he played 40 minutes. 11 points, 14 assists, 2 steals, and 2 threes. You'll be shocked to know that the DeAndre Jordan minutes went hor- horribly. He was minus 11 in 9 minutes before he was ejected. Doc Rivers, honestly, just handcuffed the bloke. Like, why do we keep playing him? I know I go on about it and you think it doesn't make any difference. Wait till the playoff game happens and Jordan plays 3 minutes and they get outscored to by 12 points in that time. It is just embarrassing that he's playing that much. And we saw the downside of Matisse Thibel today. One assist and one steal. That is it. Not a single point. Missed all five of his shots. This is why he's a tough roster. It's He's a steals and a steal specialist, really, who adds some blocks. And everything else is very, very up and down. You don't get much consistency out of him. For the Pacers, you'd be shocked to know that there is no... Uh, Malcolm Brogdon did not play. I'm not... Tired. So that means you don't get to see my tits today. He was out. Goga was out. That's not a shock either. But out of no, well, not out of nowhere. Yesterday it was out of nowhere. But for absolutely no reason whatsoever, TJ McConnell returned. He played 15 minutes and had two points with five assists. Missed all four of his shots. They don't play again until Saturday. Much like the Kings. Wouldn't bother adding him. I don't know why he came back. But he did. Isaiah Jackson got 2,000 about a minute, I reckon, to start this game. 
ended up playing 25 and had 16 and four with two steals and four blocks. That's sick. I don't know whether Goga's going to play the rest of the year, but Jackson's worth looking at when we get towards Saturday. And then Jalen Smith, who'd been also pretty disappointing, played 30 minutes, 19 and seven with three blocks. Big game there. Well, Shea Brissett, he's always got this potential, doesn't he? Four points on 11%. Oh, shit. No defensive stats. He'd been playing pretty well prior to this, but this was rough. We know that his role is there, just the production's all up and down. He would have 25, 11, and 5, and Halliburton had 21, 8, and 5. Good numbers uh, from both of those guys, and the Red Rooster had 13 points. Terry Taylor starting is basically just putting um, Justin Anderson out of the rotation at this point, and I don't really think that Juzza is going to come back into that. But I'm going to tell you now about a new sponsor to the show, and that is Shady Rays, an independent sunglasses company that gives you the features of 200 bucks sunglasses for a fraction of that price. That means polarized lenses, well-constructed durable frames, and premium high-end finishes. Also, something you won't find anywhere else is Shady Rays Insane Protection Program. Shady Rays includes lost and broken protection on every pair. They will send you a brand new pair if you lose them, no matter what happened. That is... Honestly, uh, Ray, my guy, that's not right. I don't know how you're doing that, but you're doing it. So give them a try. If you don't love them, you'll pay nothing. What? An another insane uh, situation you got going on there, Shady. It's as simple as that. 10 meals are also donated, donated to Fight Hunger in America when you shop with Shady Rays. Exclusively for our listeners, you head to ShadyRays.com. Use the code LOCKEDON to get 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. That's the code LOCKEDON for the best deal of the season. 50% off two or more pairs of Shady Rays sunglasses backed by over 150,000 verified five-star reviews. Game two, the Cavs. Uh, what, what? Yeah, tanking is interesting, isn't it? The Cavs lose to the Magic, 120-115. We saw, I think last week it was, that the Cavs played the Magic and they almost lost that one and they lose again. There's still no Mobley or no Allen. Maybe Mobley's back for the next game. Allen probably not coming back in the regular season. Markinen was good here. 25 points with six triples in 35. And Love had a nice 17-13 double-double. But of course, they're pretty up and down, those guys. And Garland played 41 minutes again. Insane playing time. 27-6 and 10 with two steals. The C parter, 28 minutes for Moses Brown. 10 and 12 with a block. That's what you get him for is for blocks and for rebounds. And he gave you that, so keep holding until we hear about Mobley. While Karis Levert, another stinker. 11-4-4, four four, a triple zero. Didn't, didn't shoot too badly, but he's so fringy at the moment that if you want to create an open roster spot for streaming, see you later to him. Isaac Okoro continues to be one of the worst fantasy contributors out there. He did have two steals and a block, so I'll give him credit there, but missed both his free throws and had five one and one otherwise. He's just one of the worst fantasy contributors you will ever find. And Lamar Stevens had 6-5 and five in 22. For the Magic, I'm shocked that they brought Franz Wagner back. He lasted seven minutes before spraining his other ankle. Now, surely that is it for him. Surely he's not coming back from that. They also brought, for some reason, Jalen Suggs back. He had four points in 18 minutes. I don't think we want to go and add him. There's Wendell Carter and Cole Anthony still out. Will they play again? I don't know. I would have, again, said that Suggs and Wagner were out. In fact, I did say that. They both came back. So now, into the, in the realm of, I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to lose, so you probably should sit these guys. That was my common sense for saying that. But now, uh, common sense goes out the window. I don't know what they're doing. I've got absolutely no idea what they're going to do with these players. Wagner, very, very iffy, but who knows? Let's talk about Mo Bumba, whose minutes and production has been all over the place. One, two, three, four, five. Josh, play Sheck Wes. No. 21 and 12 with five triples for Mo in 29 minutes with six blocks. That is huge. 58 fantasy points. Of course, he's had some runs of being shit house, but the upside has always been great. And Akiki had one of his better games as well. He's been dreadful, really. And even with this game, he's not a top 200 player over the last two weeks. But 11 and 9 with three threes, two steals, and a block. I'd find it hard to trust using him. Markel Fultz continues to look really good. The minutes limit's still in place, and he's shooting at numbers which are definitely going to come down. 16, 2, and 6 with two steals is great, but 67% is not real. Um, I imagine, again, that Anthony is out for the rest of the year and then full starts, but he's still going to be limited, but you can use him. No problem with that. Well, Devin Kennedy had 10, 4, and 2 with two steals, and they benched RJ Hampton. He had one of his better games, actually. 10, 2, and 7. Those seven assists a little bit out of nowhere, but don't get excited. Do maybe get excited about Iggy Brasdakis? Not excited, but at least interested. 20 points in 36 minutes. Six rebounds. Again, I do expect that Wagner doesn't play, but who knows? I've been wrong a million times before. And 
Iggy played those big minutes because of the absence of Franz Wagner, and he scored well. So he's a name at least to watch who is basically rostered nowhere. So could be an option for you. Next one, the Rockets, the Nets. The Rockets take care of business by losing. The Nets win at 118-105. Took us a while to get here, but cousin Kevin Porter is putting up big numbers. He's 35th over the last two weeks in category leagues. He had 36 points, four assists, six triples, 41 minutes. Now, this minute load, not realistic. This usage, because even though Christian Wood's out and might not return, they will get other players in. So it's not exactly realistic to expect rest of, uh, for next season, but it's been impressive. Jalen Green, 30-point streak intact. 30 points, four triples, six rebounds, steal on a block, 41 minutes. So what they're doing here is great. It's really good. It means a little bit. It doesn't mean everything, but it means a little bit. So it's impressive. And then... Your mate, the delicate dancer, Alperen Sengun. It's a delicate dance in just 17 steps. 36 minutes, 14, 11, and 5. Yeah, obviously a must roster player. Um, Joshy Christopher got the minutes, which was great. 30 of them. Five points on 18% is horrible, but he brought two steals, two blocks, and eight rebounds. I think he's pushing to at least be a 12-team streamer, while Garrison Matthews continues to like suck. He's He's been... Terrible, and I know I bang on about it, but it's it's Paddy Mills level of terrible. Four points in 22 minutes for Matthews. More minutes for the Wild thing in this one as well. Six and nine with three steals for Tate, but shot 20 percent, and I wouldn't bother with him as a 12 team league guy at this point in the uh, in the season. For the Nets, Irving played 40 minutes against the Rockets, guys. 42 points, eight triples, six assists, two steals, and a block. It's great for fantasy, but. Not great for common sense. Well, Durant had 18, 9, and 7 in 37 minutes. Drummond got into foul trouble. That's why he played only 20 minutes. He had 10 and 11 with a steal and two blocks. And then they played Aldridge and Claxton. They overlapped. Aldridge played 17 minutes, did nothing. And I think that's largely because James Johnson was out. And there's a chance Johnson doesn't play tomorrow, meaning Aldridge might play again. Although it is a back-to-back and I wouldn't bother adding him. Claxton, 27 minutes. That's elevated because of Drummond's foul trouble. He had 9 and 9 in those 27 and Mills started with Seth Curry out. No, they sort of walked back that Curry might not play the rest of the regular season, and rest isn't necessarily going to help him in this short time. So he might return tomorrow. Mills started six points with two threes, and his immense struggles continue. While the Shark, Bruce Brown, returned. Baby shark, do, 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 do. 15, 3, and 3 with three blocks and three threes. Continues to put up just amazing numbers. Uh, top, four, top 55 over the last two weeks, which obviously is impressive considering where he started out. The, the Heat, they just went through and um, actually smashed the Hornets. Wasn't really remotely close. 144-115 for Charlotte. Montrez Harrell, DNPCD. We talk, I've talked about it, the, the pattern, how they just... Remember when they were playing him and Plumlee together like 35 minutes a night and it made no sense? They've figured out that, hey, we don't really need him to play. Although, yeah, to be fair, they lost by 30 points. So with him out, obviously he's been a drop for weeks. So is Kelly Ubro, who played 16 minutes for six points. And that's with Haywood out. They went to more Jalen McDaniels and 15 minutes of Isaiah Thomas. Rogier has struggled. Like, remember that stage where he was top 10 about four weeks ago? He's outside the top 100 over the last two weeks now. 16, 2, and 6. Just can't really get anything big going. Well, Ball had 18, 5, and 14, and Bridges 29, 6, and 4 on. Excitedly. 69% shooting. Giggity! PJ Washington had 13, 6, and 4. Again, just really solid enough. I don't think he's ever going to blow up into a big time player, but solid enough as a back end guy. For the, I imagine, sorry, I imagine they sat Haywood because it was a back to back and he should play tomorrow, but we don't know. For the Heat, they were without Kyle Lowry, Dwayne Dedman, and Markeith Morris was injured as well. And Victor Oladipo back out of the rotation. Hero played 34 minutes, 35 points, 6 triples, 6 rebounds. Big game. Butler, 27, 5, and 8. Great. Duncan Robinson out of nowhere, 21 points with 7 threes. Don't trust him, but stream for threes. That's what you do. And then the Winter Soldier played 19 minutes because Robinson was playing so much more. Caleb Martin also got 26. While Gabe Vincent really struggled in a start replacing Lowry, he had two points in 23. Obviously, we're not rostering Vincent or Martin. Um, and then PJ Tucker left early, just 22 minutes for him, 7-7 seven and seven with a calf strain. You'd have to imagine that they will be all extra cautious with a bloke who's 37 years of age or whoever old he is uh, with a calf injury just heading into the playoffs. So I wouldn't expect... Wouldn't expect to see him um, in these next couple of games. But very interesting that they did keep Victor Oladipo back out of the rotation after he played so well in that last game where, admittedly, everybody was resting. Maybe Vic didn't have his built bars because he'd want to have them. They're the best-tasting protein bar ever. Why wouldn't you want to have them? 
Built Bar tastes just like a candy bar, but instead of reaching for a candy bar, which is jam-packed full of calories and fat and sugar, all that bad stuff, you can grab a protein bar, a Built Bar, which is 17 grams of protein, but low in all those other things. You wouldn't want to grab a regular protein bar because, let's be honest, they're, they're not good. They're, they taste like garbage. They don't have the flavor that you're looking for. And it's just, it's such a chore to get through. It's Built Bar, it's a delight. It's delicious. And they've got their puffs as well now. Marshmallow, protein-induced marshmallow centers. So... Head to built.com, use the promo code LOCK15 and save yourself 15% off your order of Built Bar. Built Bar is built different. The next game is the Toronto Raptors handling the Atlanta Hawks in Toronto. 118-108 is the final score there. There was no Gallinari for Atlanta, so they continued to start Timotei Luawu Cabarro. He had seven points in 21 minutes, but it was Hunter Bogdanovich and Herder that really stepped up. Fanta Pants had 21 with five triples. That's Kevin Herder. Or Trey Young had 26, 4, and 15. And DeAndre Hunter scored well. He did very DeAndre Hunter-ish things, but he had 20 points, and that's great. And then, like, no steals, no threes. Six rebounds, two assists. Like, it's a fine line. It's not great, though. Bogdanovich, 19, 5, and 9 with five threes. He was questionable heading in, so that was good. And then Akonwu really did nothing. Zero points in 16 minutes. And D-Lon Wright uh, got himself a steal. And that's all that you'd be looking at him for in 17. And we've got 33 Clint Capella minutes. 10 and 14 with two steals. He's definitely picked up his production of late. Still not quite back to uh, where he was in the past. Next, or not the next game, the, the Raptors side of things. Ananobi was out. So Siakam played 40 minutes. Of course, he did 31, 13, and 6. And we also got a little bit more out of Boucher. 22 minutes here, 18 and 7. But as we saw from the last game... When OG was out, you can't really rely upon that from him. Achua played 24 minutes. He had 11, 2, and 0. Pissed on both of your percentages, and he is he's rostered in 12 10 leagues. No, no, no. You do not need to do that. Gaz Trent had 14, 2, and 1. A triple 1. Inefficient, but solid enough numbers there for Trenner. And Barnes, he had 19 and 14 with not much else, and actually hurt you from the free throw. It was big minutes for um, Ken Birch, the big tree. 5 and 8 in 24 for him, while Van Bleet, oh, oh my God. This guy just, his knees are cooked, obviously. He, maybe there's a rest for him at some point coming up here. He had 12, 2, and 9, a steal, a block on 19% shooting. He is, uh, he did this at the end of last season as well. He just gets bludgeoned through the year with excessive minutes. And then come the end of the year, he can't get any lift and can't hit any shots. And your field goal percentage absolutely dies. And you've got to really consider him as an absolute must punt free throw percentage player. The Washington Wizards. They beat the Minnesota Timberwolves, 132-114. The final score there. Big game for the Wizards, who continue to be confoundingly impressive at times. I don't know. They're a weird one to try and like get your head around. Dan Gafford played 31 minutes, and that's not because Porzingis was out. So they played them together for the first time. You just can't predict some of this stuff, and this was one of them. 24-12 and 12 for Gafford, 91%. They didn't play Anthony Gill at all, who'd been playing 20 minutes a night. They said, all right. Let's just make Porzingis a four now. And it worked. Porzingis had 25 and eight. And Hachimura played 37 minutes. He had 21, five and four. So good scoring, but rough from the line. No defensive stats. We know the ups and downs with Rui. It's always evident. And I don't think Kuzma comes back this year. But if you need points, Hachimura can bring it. I like what Denny did as well. 17, eight and five, a steal, two blocks and two threes for Abdia. And Ish Smith, third straight game with big minutes as the backup. 30 minutes, 11, 8, and 14. One of the best assist stream guys out there. Well, Sadoransky, only 20 minutes. But guess what? He did his thing. He had seven assists. This is what he does. He's a worse stream option than his Smith, but he is still a stream option for assists. Very hard to get seven a game from anyone. Kispert continues to really underwhelm. 13 and 6 with three threes in 31 minutes. For the Wolves, Paddy Beverly was out again. So they started Malik Beasley, and he did his thing. 14 points with four threes. There's actually nothing else. One rebound, zero assists, zero steals, zero blocks. But if you need some threes, he can help you out there. And Jaden McDaniels returned. So Jared Vanderbilt bars an obvious drop. Eight and six in 20 minutes. McDaniels isn't an ad. He had zero and two with an assist in 15. And Jordan McLaughlin played 21 minutes, had five, two and four, two steals and a block. If you need assists and steals, you can look at McLaughlin as an option. Townsie, 26 and 10. Russell, 17, three and 11. So pretty solid numbers from those guys. While well, the artist formerly known as Torian Prince played 23 and had 11 points with three threes. But we're talking just really deep league stuff with him. It's time for me to really clear out my chakras and align my whatevers because this next game, it's one that we've got to talk about for some bloody reason. The Oklahoma City Thunder 
And the Portland Trailblazers. The Blazers win 94-98. Yes, I know they technically didn't win, but they won. Because they, they, they won by achieving their aim, and that is losing. These teams went hard to try and put out the worst lineups they possibly could. No Josh Hart, no Justice Winslow, no Trenton Watford. Then they sat Brandon Williams and start, started Chris Dunn. Dunn had seven points on 20% shooting. He still had eight rebounds, eight assists and a steal, and he's an okay assist and steal streamer. Keon Johnson, actually big game, 18, six and seven, one steal, two blocks. You've seen his name appear on my streaming show quite a few times because that potential's there. And we're seeing it a little bit now. Drew Eubanks had 14 with two steals and two blocks. And Greggy Brown, finally a block from the big fella. He had a triple one to go with 17 points in 24 minutes. Macklemore's a good three streamer. Another three of them here for 17 points. And then there's not a lot else that's exciting. We've got 13 Reggie Perry minutes. We've got six and five from CJ Allaby. But this box score looks actually, yeah, you can actually make sense of it compared to whatever we're going to see from the Thunder team that somehow won. How? How did this team win? They played a six-man rotation. A six-man rotation. They decided before the game, Alexei Pokyshevsky, Teo Maladon, and Aaron Wiggins were just not going to play. We, we, don't, nah, we, don't give, we don't give a fuck at all. You're just not playing. All right. Now, I know that so many people are going to be fighting. They're a disgrace. Disgraceful franchise. Send them to Seattle. Penalize them. It, it, is, it is one game in April, let's be fair. And it, it, is, it is embarrassing. I, I agree. Like this sort of shit. But they're doing it because the system can reward that even though they still won. And I think the system does need to be changed. And I think there's got to be something that changes here. But I don't need to get so fired up about a team who's literally not the worst team in the NBA, not even remotely close to having the most losses this season, and wasn't remotely close to it last season either. So yes, this is an embarrassing lineup. It's an embarrassing game. And it looks terrible for the league. But the Thunder are nowhere near the worst team over the last two years. And again, not remotely close to it. Shout out to Detroit and Houston, who have been significantly worse over that time. There might be even another team or two that's in there. They're just trying to tear down for a short time to build back up. Get it? it makes sense. People just have an, a massive animosity towards them. And again, this is bad. The fact that you signed two two-way guys or two 10-day guys and started them and played them 43 and 44 minutes is terrible. Georgios Kalitzakis, the last pick in the draft, he signed, played 43 minutes, had 17 points with three steals and a block. Somehow went three of eight from the line. Will he even play again? I don't know. They played the Jazz, the Clippers, and the Lakers the last three games. So I don't know if he will. Xavier Simpson, Xavier with a Z, with a Z, with a Z. Played 44 minutes as the point guard. 10, three, and five, a steal on two blocks. Not horrific numbers, but I can't look at this and go, yeah, I think he's worth streaming because I don't know that he's going to play. Big Krejci has been playing like 30 plus minutes. They deemed him too good. He played 21. He had 11 and three with three steals. He's been a good steals guy. The incantation, Olivier Saar. It's Leviosa, not Leviosa. 39 minutes, 10 and 12 with two blocks. Roby, 18 and six with six blocks and three threes. And big Jalen Horde, 46 minutes. 24 and 21 with three steals. That's his second 20 rebound game in the last three. Now, if Poku and... Um, Wiggins and Maladon play, he doesn't get this playing time. So I wouldn't rush to go, but I would add him over Saar or Krejci or Simpson or uh, Kalitzikas. But I don't have any confidence in saying that for any of these guys. Lindy Waters came out. He had eight points in four minutes and they said, all right, you've made too many shots. Can you go sit down? And he didn't play again. It's, it was insane. And I don't know how the hell we judge any of this for fantasy. Like, it is a back-to-back, -back, so what's Horde going to do tomorrow? What's Simpson? Are they going to play? Is Poku, Maladon, Trey Mann? I don't think he's going to play. Um, Wiggins, are they going to be back tomorrow? Probably, but I just don't know. It's a complete mess, and it is it is terrible to look at that box score, but again, I think we probably just need to calm down a little bit on some of the overreactions that were uh, that have been put out there when looking at this, um, this game and this team. Game eight. The Bucks handled the Bulls pretty comfortably. The Bulls clinched a playoff spot with this loss. Obviously, it's not them getting the loss that clinched it. It's other results, but they, they get in there. 127-106. Brooke Lopez with easily his best game. 28 minutes, no, 29 minutes, 28 points. Two steals, three blocks, and seven rebounds. He'd struggled a bit before this and only played 22 minutes last game, but this was strong. Holiday had 11, 6, and 13. Not that he was up against much opposition. While Middleton had 19, 5, and 3. And Giannis only played 24 because they, they pounded the Bulls. 18, 9, and 7 for Yanni. 
Porters had 13 and 9. I'm not really sure how much to read into this game, though. They were up big, most of it. And as you can see, the minutes were just um, very easily limited. And I think you're going to have rests for some of these guys down the stretch at times. Um, Wesley Matthews had 11. Grayson Allen had 13. But again, we just can't trust any of these players to be regularly good. For the Bulls, Zach Levine sat out. DeRozan played 37 minutes. He claims he's not going to rest any games down the stretch here. 40 points, 6 assists. Great percentage. It's a big game. Paddy Williams started in place of Levine. 32 minutes, 18 and 6. No defensive stats, which is annoying, but shot well. His numbers have been good the last three games, and he's at least worth a look. Dasunmu had 9 and 6 with two steals, while Alex Caruso, 22 minutes, 0 points. He did have 8 assists, and likely if you were rostering him, it was for assists. But his value has dropped pretty significantly, and I don't really think we have to 100% be holding him while the big fella. It's Boosters. It's Big Boosters. Boosters it. Boosters a bitch. Only 26 minutes. He was just bad. 16% shooting. 7 points, 6 rebounds. He's obviously been much better than that in most games. But it has been a little bit of a decline here over the last two weeks. He's the 66th ranked player. Kobe White played a lot with Levine out. 13 points in 31 with three threes. He's at least a streamer for threes. Sometimes free throws if he ever gets to the line. Um, but otherwise, yeah, he's not going to have any sort of um, lasting impact or, or lasting value. I wouldn't think. The next game. The San Antonio Spurs, without DeJounte Murray, beat the Nuggets by 20. 116-97. Bad loss for Denver. Big win for San Antonio if they actually wanted to win. I don't know. Devin Vassell, 34 minutes, 20 and 8, 4 assists and 4 threes. What he is doing over the last week is sort of what I hoped he'd be able to do when White was traded. It was rocky, but he's putting it together now. Well, Joshie Richardson had another good game. 18 points, 4 threes and 2 steals. And Keldon Johnson's 20-point streak continues. 20 points, 2 triples. Good game. DeJounte was out. And it looks like he might be out next game as well. So Trey Jones is an option. 14, 4, and 10. I think he looks really good. I think he's an option for sure as an ad. And Pirtle got some foul trouble in this one. Only 23 minutes, 14, and 8. And that gave more minutes to Zach Collins, who had 13 and 7. Collins has played pretty well the last couple. Probably more of a 14-team league player. But just watch, because his production's jumping up. While uh, Lonnie Walker did nothing, and Josh Primo did less, somehow. For the Nuggets, Jokic had some big numbers. Again, 41 and 17. Um, missed a couple from the free throw line, but good numbers there. And Aaron Gordon, a nice 18-13 double-double. And Barton Will Barton went from huge to shithouse. Nine points on 25% with six assists and three threes. And that's why we have the frustration that we do with him, is that he put together those big games and then do this. They were without Jeff Green, so they started Austin Rivers for reasons that I'll never know. Um, 33 minutes for Austin Rivers, eight points with two triples. And also before the game, Dr. Michael Malone, oh, we want to get Bryn Forbes some minutes. He's out of rhythm. We need to get him in rhythm. So he played him seven minutes in the first half and not at all in the second half. So there's your rhythm. And the big stiff, he played just 18 minutes. And that's why, again, it's so hard to trust. We see the numbers. We go, it's great for Bones. Great, mate. Really good numbers. And then Malone does this and doubles his minutes with Austin Rivers. Seven points for Highland with four assists. And Monty Morris, after a great game last time out with Shithouse, four points, no steals, no blocks, no threes, six rebounds and three assists. Not a good game at all. The Utah Jazz managed to just get over the line against the Grizzlies, and they almost choked away another lead. They win it in overtime, 121-115, the final score. For Memphis, they were without Dylan Brooks and Ja Morant. Desmond Bain came back. Tyus Jones started. He came back. Jaron Jackson, they all scored over 20. 23 for Bain with five steals. Tyus had 24, 2, and 5 in 37 minutes, and Jackson had 28 and 7 with three threes and three blocks. Bad shooting from Jaron, 30% but 9 of 10 from the line. Um, Jones is a 12-team league guy. Melton played 28, despite coming off the bench, 11, 10, and 4. And with Brooks and Morant out, that's not really a surprise. While Steve Adams returned also, did his thing with just three points and 25% from both the field and the line. But he did have 13 boards, eight rebounds, two assists. Oh, sorry, two steals. Try again. 13 rebounds, eight assists, two steals, and a block. And continues to be just one of the weirdest fantasy players we've had this season. Another really good performance from the Grizzlies. They didn't get the win. And um, I think they'll be okay with that because they are locked into the two seed. But the Jazz, Gobert had 22 and 21. That's uh, Jalen Horde type numbers. And Hassan Whiteside also double-doubled with four blocks in 19 minutes. Played pretty well in this one, Whiteside. Good streamer for big man stats. Conley had 13, 6 and 8. While Mitchell really struggled. 20 points on 24 shots. He did have nine boards and five assists, but that's a big hit to your field goals. And Royce O'Neal continues to be like just really bad. They closed this game with Daniel House over him. 
O'Neill had six points in 24. House had nine in 29. We don't want to use either of them for fantasy leagues, but it is important to note that change in the rotation. While Clarkson had 22, five and five, shot the ball really well and played 31 minutes. Prior to this, he had struggled 167th over the last two weeks, but this was a really strong game from Jordan Clarkson in this one. Let's do the next game. The Oh, wrong button there. Let's try it again. There we go. The New Orleans Pelicans and the Sacramento Kings. The Pelicans win at 123-109. McCollum had 23-4-5 with four steals. They were without Jonas Valanciunas, so we got more minutes out of Jackson Hayes. 29 minutes, 23-12 and 12 with two threes. Now, prior to this, he'd really struggled. He was losing a lot of touches. Larry Nance was playing ahead of him at times. If Valanciunas is out, we have a little bit more faith in Hayes, but it's hard for me to look at this and go, yeah, this is now going to be how they use him as we move forward. Nance only played the 22, 10, 4, and 3, a steal and a block. I wouldn't bother with him in 12s or 14s. And Bill Hernan Gomez was fine, 12 and 12 in 26. But again, he's obviously only an option with Valanciunas out. He doesn't even play most games otherwise. Ingram really struggled with the shot, 17 points on 16 attempts. But seven rebounds and eight assists is strong. While Jones had four steals and Graham still only playing 18 minutes. We obviously don't care about that for 12 or 14 team leagues. And Jose Alvarado just got the 15 minutes. He got his two steals, but he's not playing enough to make an impact in most formats. For the Kings, uh, in the pregame availability, Alvin Gentry said, hey, we're just going to reduce Davion Mitchell's minutes down over the next three games. We've been playing him too much. We're going to cut those minutes down. Mitchell had 15 and 17 assists in 40 minutes. So obviously Gentry is either dumb or a liar. He's either too dumb to realize he'd played in that many minutes or he lied in saying he was going to reduce those minutes. I don't know which one it is. Just don't say anything. Very simple. You don't have to say you're going to reduce them. You don't have to. They don't play again until Saturday, the Kings. So you have to make a decision with Mitchell. I think you probably hold. And I think you probably do the same with Damian Jones, who had 22 points in 29 minutes on 80%. That's a top 40 player. I know it's only one more game and you've got to wait three streaming days. But again, it might make more sense to open that spot up and get other games in on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday versus holding for one game. Or you get the two, sorry, Saturday, Sunday. So the fact is, the guys like Jones and Mitchell on a 15-game day on Sunday, you will play them. They will be in your active lineup. So you still get those two games. Work out whether that makes sense. But guys like Trey Lyles, who inexplicably is not inexplicably, he was inexplicably playing 34 minutes a night. Nothing seems to have changed to me for him to be playing 19 minutes a night. Now, I don't think he's good. I don't think there was any point in him playing those minutes, but he was. So what changed to make them drop? I've got no idea, but you can drop. Drop his ass all the way to the wire. He had eight points in 19. Well, the big ragu, you can drop him now as well. Six points in 29 minutes. Again, not playing till Saturday. His roster spot has better use. Jeremy Lamb had 15, five and five. So that's... I mean, something. I don't really know what to do with that. I guess the decision is taken out of my hands by saying they don't play until Saturday. He's not an ad. I'd, I'd drop Harrison Barnes, to be honest. The pencil. Harrison Barnes. Barnesy. 12 and 6. Will you even play him on a Sunday that's full? Will he even play both of those games? I'm not sure. So I, I wouldn't bother holding on to him while Nemus, Nemius Cater. Played 11 minutes with five points there as the backup big with Alex Len out. I do not expect Sabonis or Fox to play in either of those games. I'm not going to do a Brogdon-type guarantee, but I'm just very, very doubtful they're going to be out there playing. All right, and let's go to the last game of the day. The Lakers' season, in all effects, is mercifully over. They are eliminated from play-in contention. The Suns win it um, 121-110. The final score, um, just brutal again for the Lakers. Do you reckon LeBron and Anthony Davis plays in these remaining games? I don't. I don't see why they would. Davis is in pain. LeBron's currently not playing anyway. I reckon they're done. I wouldn't drop them, but Jesus Christ, I really don't think they're going to play. Davis, 21 and 13 in 36 minutes, a steal and a block. Solid numbers. Austin Reeves, who was legitimately out of the rotation, played 31 minutes and had 18, 4, and 6. That's a really good line. I don't trust it at all. I don't trust what this team is doing on a night-to-night basis. When Yin Gabriel was starting about a week ago, he played six minutes. Malik Monk played 18 minutes. Yes, he picked up three really quick fouls, but then they just didn't go back to him. Seven points in 18 minutes for him. Bradley went from playing 34 to 18 minutes. It's probably 18 minutes too many, but you can't predict any of this shit. Mallow had 10 points in 24. He was playing 15 minutes a night a week or so ago. Like, if Davis and LeBron shut it down, Westbrook will probably play and he'll be fine. But outside of him, 
I don't know who I would trust. Reeves, Anthony Howard, Horton Tucker, Monk, Bradley, Johnson. I don't I don't think I'd want any of them on my roster. I'm not even sure where the stream value is going to come. This is no consistency on a night-to-night basis. Um, nothing, yeah, again, nothing really massively standing out here apart from the fact that, yeah, they suck. Onto the Suns. They were always going to try and kill them. They did. 32 for Booker in only 30 minutes. Aiton had 22 and 13. They will probably rest some guys now that they've taken care of business with the Lakers. McGee showed what he can do as that um, backup big man when you need those big man stats. Nine boards, three blocks. It's great. Chris Paul only 24 minutes. Bridges only 27. Crowder 23. And Cam Johnson 25. I don't think Cam Johnson's a 12-team league guy unless they rest guys that don't include him. It's just too crowded in there. Like, he's the 123rd ranked player this year with that big stretch where Crowder was out and, and Paul was out and he was putting up some good numbers. But when they are healthy, he does struggle to make enough of an impact to be more than like a streamer for threes. But again, they could rest some guys and it might not include resting him. Keep an eye on campaign in case they do rest players. We know what he can do. He had 10 assists in 23 minutes here. And then for threes, you might want to keep an eye on, say, a Landry Shamit who had nine points in 20 minutes. But of course, he's not particularly good. Let's look at the lines of the night. Your monstrous is Kyrie Irving. The waiver wire line of the night is Dan Gafford. Your young gun of the night is Tyrese Maxey. And your dud of the night is the painter, Matisse Thibel. For your top 10 players today, number one is Irving, followed by Maxi, Hero, Brooke Lopez, DeRozan, Bumba, Embiid, Jokic, Booker, and Butler. Top 10 players under 50% rostered. Number one was Gafford. Uh, look, maybe. Unless, if they go back to the Porzingis Gafford combination, I, I don't know if I trust it. In fact, I probably don't, but maybe. Isaiah Jackson, yes, but no. Like, yes, in terms of value, but they don't play until Saturday. So I'm not sure that's going to be worth it. Keon Johnson, nice streamer. Jalen Horde, well, their rotation's all over the shop. We don't know, but probably at least worth a look. Dunk Robinson, not interested. Jeremy Lamb, not interested. Tyus Jones, yes. And Ish Smith, yes. Very interested in those guys. JaVale McGee for big man stats and Joshy Richardson for points, threes, and steals. And your top 10 players in points leagues today were... Jokic, Embiid, Siakam, Horde, Irving, Bamba, Garland, DeRozan, Jaron, and Brooke Lopez. And that will do it for me today. Don't forget to follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app if you are here on YouTube. Thumb it up and leave your comments down below, guys. We are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.